This is Dr. Jerome Corsi, and today it's uh, Tuesday, it's March 12, 2024. Uh, as you can see, I'm traveling again. I'm in a hotel room. I'll be traveling both, much of this week. And uh, bear with me. We, um, we, I, we have an announcement to make, which is that my new book is just published. It's uh, on Amazon right now. And I want to feature it for a minute or two here to, at the start. And we may do much of this program on it. But the book is The Assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And it's titled The Final Analysis, which is a forensic analysis of the JOK autopsy x-rays proves that two headshots from the right front and one from the right rear are what killed Kennedy. He was also hit in the back, one in the back, two shots from the front and one in the rear. Okay, now if we go to, uh, Chris shows you the cover here and we can pull off the cover and enlarge it. I want to show you on the x-ray, and I'm going to go into the book and do a little bit of analysis of it before we do some things on the news today. And that is, if you take a look at this and pull up the, enlarge it if you can, Chris, uh, what we, I'm working with Dr. David Mantic. Uh, Dr. David Mantic is a radiation oncologist, and he has uh, seen the x-rays in the, uh, in the uh, archives, the skull x-rays of JFK, uh, a total of nine times. That's more than anyone else. And he's been writing about this for 30 years because he's found some remarkable things which show that, in fact, uh, JFK was shot from the front as well as from the rear. Now, what Dr. Uh, Mantic did is he took optical density email uh, measurements of these x-rays. And Chris, if you'll enlarge, just be, I'll point out first on the Zapruder film. You can see the blue arrow. Kennedy was hit at the forehead, the right forehead, uh, and right at the hairline. And then the second shot, and the sequence was almost right on top of each other. But the, uh, the red arrow shows a shot that went in at the right temple, right above the ear. And it blew out the back of his head. I can see it in certain enlargements. We show it in the book. There's a big black space here at the back of Kennedy's head. And that was placed there. Uh, that's, again, a masking of the film. It was, it's a doctoring of the film to mask what was really a gaping hole at the back of JFK's head. And the third shot, which is this yellow arrow, came in at the, at the knob in the back of his head and hit at the low angle. It was a low angle shot. It was not from the Texas School Book Depository. Now, I think one of the most startling things in the whole book, and it's on the cover, Chris, if you'll just enlarge the skull x-ray, the skull x-ray places these arrows. The blue arrow is right at the forehead. Enlarge that a little bit more if you can, Chris. Uh, that's good. The blue arrow right there is the shot at the forehead of Kennedy. The red arrow is right by the ear. That's where the ear would be. That's the temporal bone. And the yellow is right at the EOB, the what they call the um, external... It's it's the uh, it's a, 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 a obtuberance. It's a, a a bump at the back of your head. Okay. Now, if you look at the blue arrow, what you're going to see is the shot came in at the forehead, right there. You can see an entry point, and I'll show you. In, it, if you take a look at the book, you can see we do in great detail uh, that site, so you can see the actual entrance. Go back up and enlarge it again, Chris, if you would for a minute. Good. Then if you trace across the top, you can see there's actually, in the x-ray, there's all these little dots here, which are bullet fragments. So those bullet fragments start at the front of the head, and they end at the back of the head, and they do not exit, which means that was a frontal shot. And also the largest fragment is in the back of the head. So that largest fragment uh, means that the bullets given the momentum, largest fragment's gonna travel the furthest in the head. So it went to the back of the head. Uh, this red arrow, you can see there the a little notch is where the bullet entered. <clears throat> right there, that little tiny notch, I'll show it to you. If we get to the back of the book, more pictures on it. There's a lot of illustrations in this book. At the very back, you can see there was here, 
part of the skull is missing because it was blown out. But the top arrow, the blue arrow, there is no exit at the back of the head. Okay, and so that's a frontal shock for clearly. Now, if we go into the book, of course, if we can pull into the book at about, oh, page 17. When JFK came to the emergency room at Parkland Hospital, which he was driven to almost immediately, but it took very few seconds to get there. This is the interior of the book, it's what it looks like. And if you go to page 17, scroll through it, you'll see there's, uh, what I'm discussing in the book, we, it, uh, good introductions by Doug Horn, who did the Assassinations Records Review Board. He did five volumes on the Kennedy assassination. You can see here, Dr. Crenshaw, uh, and he is pointing, he was one of the doctors in the emergency room, page 17, keep going a little bit further. Okay, a little bit, that's JFK's bloody shirt. Keep going a little bit further. You're almost there, there we go, that's it, right there. Crenshaw is, this is a video he did many years ago, later. And what he's pointing out is that when he saw JFK coming into the, to the emergency room, he noticed that there was a shot that entered at the right there, the picture below, you can see in the, uh, at the hairline and the forehead, and it went across the top of his head, and, but did not exit. That's a frontal shot. The hospital, at Parkland Hospital doctors all saw frontal shots. Okay, and the, the bottom picture is an autopsy picture, but this is a pre-autopsy picture, and Jack Kennedy's body was brought in surreptitiously into the autopsy a few minutes before the official autopsy was going to be uh, scheduled to begin. The two autopsy doctors, Hume and Boswell, did surgery on the head to mask the evidence of frontal shots. And we, we demonstrate that in the book. Now, if we go a little bit further on, I want to read a paragraph or two, but uh, what was clear was that, in fact, Parkland Hospital doctors all saw, and they saw clearly that there was a frontal shot. Jack Kennedy was hit in the neck as a frontal shot. He was hit, uh, the, the shot at the back, that blew out the back of his head was, was what they all noticed. Uh, and that is again, clear indication to me, because these are the doctors that uh, were there first before anything was, the wound couldn't have been altered. So, I write on page 19 that after the House Thought Committee interviewed the witnesses, uh, this Gary Aguilar, who was also did a good work on the medical evidence of the case, he listed the number of doctors who were in Ho Parkland Hospital who saw frontal wounds. See that the gunshot, the patient suffered, the president suffered. You know, there was every day these Parkland Hospital doctors were seeing gunshots. The fact was when Kennedy arrived, he was technically dead. The medical team, however, felt compelled to try all reasonable procedures, even though they knew the effort was useless. They, they said, you know, immediately when they saw this big gaping head at the back of Kennedy's skull, they knew his brains were gone. So the, this, this nurse, Audrey Bell said that she was right there in the, in the, in the, um, emergency room, said, I don't know what Dr. Perry told his tormentors the evening of November 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. What happened was the Bethesda doctors, when they got the body, they knew they had to make everything back shot. Jack Kennedy had to have been shot only from the back because Lee Harvey Oswald had been arrested. The Lee Harvey Oswald arrested, the evidence was now clear to the world that he was the shooter. He was framed. When he was framed, that framing was such that the, they were locked into the case because Kennedy had been shot twice from the front. And that was obvious to the doctors in Parkland. Doctors in Parkland went on and they did a, 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 news, a press conference at about 1.30 in the, after, in the afternoon, in November 22nd, 1963, when Jack Kennedy was killed. And so if you go to page 27 is where I report this, Chris, saying at 1.31 p.m., a deeply disturbed Malcolm Kidoff held a makeshift press conference right in the White House. 
He was one of the press secretaries for Kennedy. And he also pointed to his forehead to say that's where he saw the shot. It was very clear that, in fact, all these doctors were saying, and the, and the press secretary for the president, that Kennedy had been shot from the front. And he, kid off the press secretary, pointed to his exactly where the shot occurred at the right forehead. Okay, now as we go through this book, we demonstrate how the body was altered and how the shots were, were done to create evidence of a back shot, two back shots, and the doctors at Bethesda were in a mad scramble to make the body fit the way the description was officially from the government. So what we have here is evidence of a crossfire, which means that Jack Kennedy was killed not by one shooter. The government immediately starts taking evidence and erasing the evidence because the car at Parkland Hospital, the limousine in which Jack Kennedy was shot, they were washing it down almost from the very beginning. Uh, what is occurring here is a complete cover-up that began instants after the shooting. And it continued all the way to taking the body back to Bethesda in Air Force One. The body flew back, but the, the, the body was brought to the, to the hospital surreptitiously in a coffin switch, which we describe exact, in, in great detail in the book. Uh, this book is a very detailed book, and it's extremely convincing. It's 560 pages. Uh, we left really no details spared. It's got an enormous number of footnotes in it. And I will, I'm traveling. I haven't gotten my own copy of it yet, but I will have one when I get back to uh, my home in New Jersey. Uh, I want to show you on page, um, if you'll go to page 105, Chris, 105. Now, Dr. Mantic, who's a brilliant doctor and very meticulous, did these optical density measurements. On page 105, there's a densitometer. That machine, you, he had the opportunity to take the, the, the x-rays from Kennedy and measure millimeter by millimeter the amount of light coming through the x-rays. You do this because that can tell what you're looking at. Now, if you go to the uh, next page, so that he, Dr. Mannix sat there millimeter by millimeter with these three x-rays of JFK's skull, and he made these measurements. Now, if you'll go to the next page, on page 107, Dr. Mantix begins to discover and, and present how these x-rays have been altered to mask evidence of the frontal shots. So the three x-rays, all three are not the original x-ray. Okay, so on the figure 2.6, and you can see there where the blue arrow is, there is in fact a bullet there it looks like a bullet. It looks like a 6.5 millimeter bullet. They planted it there, that image. But that is a artifact because it only shows up in the x-ray that's done from the front to the back of JFK's skull. It does not appear in the lateral x-ray, which was done from the side of his head. In other words, it isn't a real bullet. It's just an artifact that was placed only on the one x-ray. Uh, and these are these are remarkable findings that all three of the x-rays, if you go to page uh, 2.8, x-ray, uh, this is on page 110, x-ray uh, figure 2.8, there's a big black, white blob in the back here, which is way too intense to be natural. That is not a natural artifact. Uh, and we're, we're able to demonstrate in this book with the optical density measurements that, um, in fact, exactly how these x-rays were altered. This is a forensic examination. It's a scientific case. This is not a case that you can dispute uh, because in fact, the measurements were also verified by Dr. Chesser separately. So we got two doctors who did the exact same measures of the x-rays and they came to the exact same conclusions. Namely that they are JFK's x-rays because the teeth match a set of pre-mortem x-rays that are in the archive, they're in the uh, JFK's museum in Boston, which show in fact that the teeth are identical, but the x-rays have been altered to mask with, they've been images placed in them, uh, which is a faked x-ray. We go to great lengths in the book to show you how x-rays are faked. 
page 148, uh, you can see the white patch that's in the back of the head. And that white patch uh, is extraordinarily white. It's way too white for it to have been a natural object. Uh, and another picture of it is on 152, figure 3.2. This book is heavily illustrated. It has a lot of different, um, every point we're making in this book, we show you. So you see the evidence directly. And the illustrations are designed to be very vivid. Right now here, this is in color. You can see this in color on the, uh, on the file. Eventually this will be uh, on the uh, you know, a Kindle or an ebook. We're not quite there yet with being able to do that, but we're, we're in the process of putting it together. Now, if you look at figure, uh, page 167, page 167, figure, figure 3.4, we're really showing you the bullet trail where, where the red circle is. That's the fragment, page 134, uh, 167, there you go, that's it exactly. The red the red circle shows you the, the large fragment from the frontal shot that traveled the furthest in the head, which again shows that that was a frontal shot. That's what was seen at Parkland Hospital. By the time it was the, the autopsy was finished at Bethesda, they did not see any frontal shots. Again, it's because of the alteration of the body. The neck wound was greatly extended to make it look like a blowout wound. Uh, the front of the head was, again, they messed up the front of the head. It looked like it was part of a blowout from a back shot, and it erased the bullet hole that was seen at Parkland. But they couldn't get rid of the trace of the bullets across the top of the head. And we discussed why. They, it was likely because of the nature of the weapon that was used and bullets that were fired those were not able to be removed. They were like gel. They were like a gelatin. They couldn't be actually, they weren't uh, able to be removed easily. And so as you get into the details of this, and uh, we go through it, to it meticulously, uh, if you take a look at page 171, that's where the frontal shot is probably most clearly evident. You can see it all across the top of the head on 171. All those yellow and, and the at the front of the head where the bullet entered, you can see a lot of the little fragments of the bullet as it began to disintegrate. Uh, it's clear evidence to anyone who knows forensics that this was a frontal shot. Okay, and the idea that there was post op there was pre-autopsy surgery was in a report by two of the FBI agents who attended the autopsy, because when Dr. Hume removed the body from the casket, uh, that was clear that the, there had been massive damage to the head. And uh, uh, Boswell and Hume, uh, Hume said there was pre-autopsy surgery and the FBI agents wrote it down. Now, if we step back from this, and I want to do a couple of conclusory statements here, let's go back to the cover and on, on um, what the nature of this book on uh, on Amazon. Uh, this book is going to be uh, a massively important book in that for 60 years, the government has lied. And what this book demonstrates and proves is that the government has taken probably the greatest crime ever committed, the assass open assassination of a president by crossfire that was coordinated and organized by the government, evident because from the moments after the, from the instance after the shooting, the government was there cleaning up the limousine, which is a crime scene that could have been analyzed for blood splatter and many other things to determine uh, where the shots came from. Instead, Secret Service was washing it down and destroyed. The, and, and by the way, we go to great lengths to show that the a shot came through the windshield. Where were the shooters? There was at least a shooter on the grassy knoll. There was a shooter on the other side of the triple underpass, the south side of this little area where Kennedy was killed in, bought by the railroad bridge. So there's two, at least one shooter on the grassy knoll, maybe two. One shooter from a low angle from behind, 
and that is a shooter from the Dell Tax building. So we know at least three shooters. And we do an analysis of how many bullet fragments there were. There were many, there were possibly many more th shooters, but there's no indication whatsoever that Lee Harvey Oswald shot any shots from the sixth floor that hit Kennedy. Because the shots that hit Kennedy did not come from that angle. And with two shots from the front, there had to have been more assassins. Lee Harvey Oswald couldn't have magically jumped from the sixth floor of the Texas School Book Depository and started shooting from the front. Didn't happen. But the government has maintained a cover-up. Now, if the government is lying about this, what else is the government lying about? I would venture to say almost everything. The government of the United States has lied to the American people about the assassination of the president, for which the government was responsible. I'm going to read just a couple sentences from my uh, introduction here. And I can keep the, you don't have to go to that in the pages, Chris. I wanted everybody to see how detailed this book is and how complete it is with illustrations and the like. Now, uh, what we say in this prologue and in the beginning of it, David Mantic wrote a, a preface, an introduction was there from uh, Douglas uh, Horn, which I think is a great introduction. And um, the prologue, which I wrote, this was a real collaboration. Uh, David Mantic and I have been working on this for a year. Uh, and it was a lot of hard work. And uh, you'll see it when you see the details of this book. So in the prologue, I write, for 60 years now, since November 23rd, 1963, the federal government of the United States has lied to us about the assassination in Dallas of President John F. Kennedy. When JFK's limousine arrived at Parkland Hospital, Secret Service agents destroyed evidence by wiping JFK's blood and brains from the limousine that carried him to death. And still today, U.S. intelligence agencies continue to redact, classify, and conceal crucial documentary evidence. That's, a, that's an essential point. Uh, even President Trump was convinced not to release documents from the Kennedy assassination. We still do not have the full story released, and many documents by the government were destroyed. I continue to read what I uh, wrote, and I'm going to a few more paragraphs. We begin by acknowledging our debt to the scores of JFK assassination researchers who devoted their time and effort to illuminate what happened on that dark day in Dallas 60 years ago. After nine visits to the National Archives to examine the JFK autopsy x-rays, David Mantic acquired forensic proof that JFK was hit by three headshots, one from behind, two from the front. Headshots hitting, hitting nearly simultaneously from the back and the front proved that JFK died in a crossfire. With a background both as a PhD physicist and a radiation oncologist, with more than 40 years of experience reading x-rays for patients, Mantic has forensically demonstrated that the remaining three JFK skull x-rays in the National Archives cannot be originals. Via hundreds of measurements directly from the extant films, he's proved the th these are altered copies. He's also noted absurd anomalies in the autopsy photographs. He's produced his own fake x-ray films just to show how it was done. The image of a fake bullet fragment was added to the anterior posterior skull x-ray. That's the one from the front of the head to the back of the head to incriminate Lee Harvey Oswald, thus intending to imply that all shots came from the rear. Furthermore, a mysterious T-shaped inscription on one film but ignored by all prior investigations. It provides independent and corroborative proof that this particular film must be a copy. That the extant x-ray films are altered copies is proof the Warren Report is disinformation. After all, why would anyone destroy original x-ray films in the most famous murder case in history? Therefore, merely because all the original x-ray films are missing is further evidence of a cover-up. Given the evidence accumulated in this book, the Warren Commission's conclusion that Oswald was the lone gunman can only be fiction. Lyndon Johnson advanced the cover-up by appointing one of his chief co-conspirators, Alan Dulles, to the Warren Commission. JFK had Dulles fired from his position as head of the FBI, of CIA, I'm sorry. The job of the Warren Commission was to, to chisel into stone 
government's lie that a lone assassin, Oswald, killed JFK by firing three shots from a sixth floor window using an unreliable surplus Italian military rifle with an improperly adjusted scope. I mean, that's, this is a remarkable story, and it shows how the American public has been gullible to be, because believing the government would not lie, the American government lied uh, to cover up its involvement in killing Kennedy. The federal government simply could not allow the public to learn that JFK's assassination was a coup d'etat originating at the federal government's highest levels. The government disinformation campaign began by destroying crime scene evidence as soon as the limousine arrived at Parkland, continued by destroying evidence of a crossfire and culminated in the manufacturer manufacturing falsified evidence designed to frame Oswald as the lone gunman. With the overt and persistent assistance of the media, this information campaign continues today. We are shaming anyone who dares to expose its lies. The CIA's relentless refusal to release critical information is no surprise. Their lawless intransigence, despite the President John F. Kennedy Records Act uh, of 1992, which demanded this evidence be released, is likely to continue as long as the so-called Republic exists. And I'm not sure how much longer we're going to last with the government's power to lie today. In addition to addressing the head wounds, we will examine the back and throat wounds. The back wound li li likely derived from shrapnel, originating from a bullet that first struck Elm Street. But multiple bullets were fired, were reported by John Connolly, by D Dr. James Young, and by more than one Secret Service agent. The throat wound derived from a frontal shot that did not transverse the body. The bullet came from the south side of the triple underpass, opposite the grassy knoll. After the bullet, bullet transmitted the, wind, the windshield, a glass, a glass fragment entered JFK's throat. This bullet may have strayed, stayed inside the limousine. No bullet transited JFK's body, thus proving Arlen Specter's single bullet theory to be a complete hoax. The United States government faces a unique moment in our history. We've been lied to by many, many things. Uh, the forensic evidence in this case proves the uncomfortable re revelation that our government for decades for now has been unfit to rule. After nine, any government that lied to its people does not deserve to be in, in business. After nine visits to the National Archives, Mentec has spent far more time with these JFK artifacts than any other qualified expert. Furthermore, he's devoted 30 years of his forensic thought to these issues. We wrote the book in the first person, allowing Mantic to use his own words to describe his personal odyssey. We dedicated the book to Douglas Horn, who was the chief analyst for the military records while serving on the Assassination Records Review Board. He also introduced Mantic's work into the ARRB, a tireless researcher and the only former ARRB employee to, to record his encounter with his with his, his encounter with darkness. Uh, Douglas Horn's magnificent five volume inside the Assassinations Records Review Board is the definitive treatment of the disinformation campaign regarding the medical evidence. Throughout this book, Mantic's accord with Horn will become obvious. A domestic conspiracy paid for with tax dollars killed JFK. Uh, this book, I think, is historic in that it sets the record straight. Uh, for those of you who follow my writing, I've tried to make the books readable for the average person. But I don't spare the technical materials which are put in appendices in this book. It's 564 pages long. Uh, I've spoken to Robert Kennedy Jr. about this book. He knows it's around, he knows it's in existence. I. I did not ask him to endorse the book. There's a courtesy we shared with him the book before it was published. I wanted him to be able to comment on the book if he was asked. It will take us some time to get this book noticed because we're not going to be able to be on Fox News. The book will not be covered in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, or any other mainstream uh, source. You're not going to see it on the nightly news. Uh, what I encourage you to do is whatever channels you watch, whatever people you listen to, have them uh, contact us to be interviewed. 
They can post things on at Corsi Jerome one on, on X. I'm going to be writing more about this in my Substack, which is uh, Dr. Jerome Corsi PhD dot Substack dot com. Uh, I'm not going to cover the news today because this is the news today. And the news today is also that this will not be covered in the mainstream media. You're not going to see any source of this whatsoever. This is a story that's going to be mainstream media is going to do everything possible to suppress this story. What I encourage you to do is to buy the book, encourage you to send the book to your congressman and to uh, demand that the media cover it. I would have a campaign here to uh, quit subscribing to all the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, turn off Fox. They won't cover this book. They're lying to you. Why spend money to with a media that's going to lie to you? There's a few of us telling the truth and it's getting harder and harder to get the truth out. We're living in a massive era of censorship. And if this doesn't stop, we will not be a free nation for long. Uh, the Republic is under severe threat and it's, uh, it's to me extremely shocking to be able finally to produce definitive evidence, scientific evidence, disputable evidence that JFK was shot from the front and from the back. I mean, this is to me, Astounding. The day JFK was killed, I was 17 years old. And I watched it, and from that moment, I knew as I watched it unfold <clears throat> that this was all a lie. I never believed that Lee Harvey Oswald shot anyone. And when he said he was a patsy, I think he was right. Uh, the moment Lee Harvey Oswald was shot, I was watching it on television. That instant, I knew that this was a cover up. They did not want Lee Harvey Oswald to talk. The federal government has been in control of this Truman Show. The entire 60 years of documentaries have been masterminded by the CIA to lie to you. We found a memo that was released with the documents that have been released, which is an internal memo from the CIA, in which they instructed the CIA members to refute anyone who dared to tell the truth about Kennedy. It's a detailed memo. You can see it in the book. It's a lot of material in this book. You've not, you've not, uh, you're, you're, it's going to be a shock to you. But bear through it and make sure others demand that it be seen. It's the final analysis. Uh, David Mantic, whom uh, has, has become a, a friend, uh, I, I think he's uh, brilliant. Anyone who can get a PhD in physics and an MD and be a radiation oncologist studying x-rays for cancer is brilliant. And he has done the research that has demonstrated that Kennedy was shot from the front. My role in this, I've been, this is my second book on the JFK assassination. Chris, if you can find uh, the uh, listing for the other, it's who really killed Kennedy. I wrote that 10 years ago. I wrote that in the 50th anniversary of Kennedy's assassination, who really killed JFK, in which I tell the political story. The political story is that JFK wanted to make peace. He did not want to go to, to nuclear war over the Cuban Missile Crisis. He was pulling out of Vietnam. He was back channeling to Khrushchev. We would not be having the wars going on that we have today as Jack Kennedy lived. I'm confident of that. That was the first book I wrote, Who Really Killed Kennedy? it has been a major theme in my life. And when I realized even at 17 years old that the government was lying to us, I began taking on this mission, which I'm continuing to fulfill today. The Truth Central is, we're endeavoring here to give you the truth. And we'll continue to do that. Uh, Chris, do you want to make any comments before we wrap up? Oh, yes. Um, the JFK assassination has always been fascinating. And as uh, people will probably guess, I was not born until six years afterward. However, when I was growing up, you say you were 17 and uh, when, when this happened, when I was growing up, the big assassination, well, the big, the big shootings were the, uh, the attempt to kill Reagan and the uh, assassination of, uh, of John Lennon. And, well, people ask at parties, where was I? Or where, you know how people ask at parties, where were you when Lennon was shot? Well, I, I don't have an alibi, so I wish people would please not ask me that question. Well, no, no one suspects you of shooting John Lennon. So <laughs> That's enough. okay. Uh, but on a, serious, <laughs> on a serious note, the JFK uh, assassination has fascinated uh, many people for the very reason 
uh, that that you're discussing this because the government has hidden major details that people were suspecting for a long time. It's just hard to not look crazy without the evidence. And, and here in this book, you present the evidence, you present uh, real forensic proof, and you present x-rays. And this is, this is very, very important, where people who may have suspected this all along now have material proof. Well, this has been, this to me is, I think, the, the most important book I've ever written. And um, I don't quite, I, I mean, I, it, it culminates a lot of my career to, to have published this book. This book I've been wanting to write, to write uh, for for a long time, and uh, I'm now pleased to have it out there. But I want to also now wrap up, as I always do, with the theme that is central to my life, which is that in the end, God always wins, and uh, God will win here too. It's taken 60 years, but we now have a proof that the government has lied to us for 60 years. The government that will lie to you for 60 years will kill you. To kill the president of the United States. This depopulationist madness that we have going on today is uh, frightening. And this is a spiritual battle we're in. The day Jack, JFK was killed, everything in America changed. That's when the dark forces began to take over, began assassinating uh, presidents around the world. Our CIA has uh, changing governments, thinking that it can engineer history. Uh, we're watching a Truman Show. We're watching constructed history. We're being presented by the government with a set of propaganda lies that are induced to make us have certain conclusions and hold certain views. And if we disagree with those views, we are censored. Ultimately, we'll be imprisoned or killed. Uh, the, the window on being able to tell the truth is closing very fastly, very fast, very fast and, and, and hard. Uh, but I don't believe it. I think there'll be a judgment of God. I encourage people in the spirit of Second Chronicles 7.14. Let's get on our knees. Let's ask God for forgiveness, for letting the world get to this point, for killing so many babies in the womb, tearing them to pieces, ripping them apart. God, you should watch what, they, what, what happens in an abortion and take a look at how the baby is destroyed or, or preserved for its body parts to be sold. Uh, these are inhuman crimes, and the people running these crimes, the Democratic Party is going to run for election for president on the rights of a woman to choose, which is a distortion of language, a language perversion to, ma to mask the murder of a live soul that only God can create. Uh, I, do think, I do think we'll get a judgment of God. I believe we're in the beginning of that judgment of God, and it's not going to be pleasant. But I don't think God created the human race to... Uh, fail. So I'm encouraging you to join me and to ask for God's intervention. Second Chronicles 714 says, if we do repent, God will hear our prayer and heal our land. This is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, today is March 12th, 2024. We're doing podcasts on thetruecentral.com every, uh, every weekday. Uh, there are books on the website. If you like the show, uh, please take a look at the books. And uh, can, through these e-pipes, you can purchase them. Uh, we are uh, launching telemedicine. In, uh, we're getting uh, in the final stages and launching some major telemedicine programs, which we will be talking about. Uh, we need to heal this land. And I believe with the assistance of those watching this program and getting this word out, we can do so. God bless you. We'll be back tomorrow.